All right, next part of the reassembly, I'm gonna start timing the engine. So if you watched my camshaft video, you would have saw I took that plastic cover and put it over top of that. Obviously I had to remove that right away. So, so I went ahead and removed that and then put the engine to TDC, top dead center for both cams. And then went down here, I put the timing cover back on and the right pulley. The pulley we had on the original engine, the timing mark was actually missing. So when we took it apart, I wasn't actually top dead center like I thought I was. This one has the marking, so I put it on there and I highlighted it white. And then I used a 24 millimeter wrench to turn the two cams so that the double dots are on the top of each of the rear. So a common problem with these cars is this left-handed nut backs off and the, tie, or the gear falls off the oil pump and leaves your car starved of oil. So there's companies that sell drilled out wires to lock wire them together. I'm going to just weld this one in place. I don't plan on taking this out ever. And if I do, I'm just replacing the whole baffle. Anyway. All right, a couple tacks on there. Finish it up. That's never coming off. Right, I'm gonna pull this pulley and cover back off so I can access my timing components. So the timing toolkit that I bought off the interwebs has a tool to hold and lock the flywheel in place. But on my engine stand, there is no room for a flywheel between the pins and the engine block. So I'm just gonna be mindful of where my engine is and not rotate it. I'm going to make my own marking though, so I can watch the whole process as I go. So since we've welded this on, there's no way of getting that gear on and off. So what we do, is take the sprocket off of the engine and put it on this way. Now install it, slide it over the crankshaft and now it's on. I'm gonna go ahead and install these bolts and they all need to be tightened according to what I've read, 22 Newton meters. So I will adjust the torque wrench and hit those with that and then flip the engine back over and get ready for the rest of the timing components. All right, to get the cam tool on to lock them in top dead center, we have to remove these last two so the tool could sit flush with the head. Now with these tools, you can see here, it's not exactly flush with the head. So I need to use the 24 millimeter wrench and turn the cams so that these set exactly flush with the head. That one's in a good spot. And this one needs to go this way. And this should be able to move freely to lock the two together. All right, I decided to put this one on off camera. I was just looking up torque specs and stuff like that for it. Got that on there. It's this moon shape faces to the right. And then this luckily had an impression of the part behind it for this other shim right here. And then these, I had to look at old pictures of when I took it apart to get it back on there. So now we can actually start with the timing process. I'm gonna start by getting the lower guide on. You can kind of tuck it in. And there's the lower guide. I'm gonna run the chain through now and just get this to kind of hang out up top here. Get it around the bottom gear. And just kind of let it chill up here. Now for the upper timing gear, there's a little arrow right here you wanna make sure it points towards the edge of the block. Make sure it's like parallel with it. Or make sure it points directly at the very edge so it's pointing straight left. And this will also be a good time to make sure you don't have any slack on the right side of the chain. So get it the right amount of teeth over. All right, so now basically all the slack is on this side of the chain. So we put tension on it. 
Our air is pointing straight to the edge here and we have very little slack in this end of the chain. So all the slack gets taken on by the tensioner. Speaking of, the left chain guide, pull that back off to give it some slack. I should have done that first. Now I'm going to install, there's a timing chain tensioner. This is where your hydraulic tensioner would go. I'm gonna use this to just apply a little bit of torque to it. All right, now I'm gonna put my middle top chain guide in here. Feed it down. Now for the middle chain tensioner here, for the Vanos chains, there is a small bolt, a short one, and a longer one. This one goes through the timing cover as well. I'm gonna put it in here for now, just so I don't lose it, because I'm good at doing that. But later we'll have to pull it out to put the timing cover on. So I'll just torque the one down to 10 Newton meters. So next one, I'm gonna load these three top bolts here with the, the smaller bolt part hanging out. All right, so next I'm gonna put these three studs in right through here. It won't be going through. And these three are gonna to be torqued to 20 Newton meters. Now, before I get too far, I got a messy countertop here. I'm gonna change the front main seal. Thing was stuck in there really good. We have our new front main seal. All right, let's get it installed. All right, with this, I got two new gaskets here. Keep a bolt in there to keep it steady. And when I put the oil pan on, I'm gonna put a little dab RTV on the bottom of these. But for right now, I'm gonna put a little bit along the top, just cause I don't exactly trust the head gasket manning surface while it has some rubber on it. I'm gonna add a little bit more RTV and then along the corners where the metal to metal contact. And then all these bolts around here are just this, this size, some longer, some shorter. I'm gonna torque them all to 10 Newton meters. All right, so I got the cover back on, 10 Newton meters for all the bolts. I also put the water pump back on and the pulley just so we can uh, rotate the engine here in a little bit, check our timing. The next step though is the Vanos pistons. They have missing teeth on the inside and out. Let's see if I can get into focus. There we go. So it's got a missing tooth on top and inside and that corresponds to missing teeth in here and on the actual crank or on the actual camshaft itself. And this uses oil pressure to rotate the cams and do the variable valve timing. So we can still we can go ahead and start by installing this first one. You can see how when you pull it in and out it's got like a spiral spline to it. And as you pull it and out, it rotates that. Once we bolt everything together, that'll then tie it to the camshaft position. Right now it's loose, so you can see it move with the hole in the middle of the slot. We'll come back to that later. This would also be a good time to install the upper timing chain tensioner or the Vanos chain tensioner. It's going to be four bolts. I'll just set it right on here. Make sure everything's clean. Two long ones in the top and a short one in the top. We'll call them medium. Two medium ones in the top and a short one. And then there's a long bolt that goes in the front. <clears throat> long bolt that goes in the front. And we'll torque everything down to 10 Newton meters. Do not pull the pin yet. All right, next step is getting the chain aligned. 
with the gears in the right spots. I like to do this in relation to how I'm gonna put it on the car. So I'll take that missing tooth and I'll set this right there. And on this side, the longer end is what goes on the engine, kind of flip from the exhaust side. This is the in intake side gear. So now that that's in place, you just move this inward. This holds the other one in place as well. Get the chain on and it won't go on really any other way. And then when you go to extend it, obviously I can't extend it all the way and the chain's still sloppy, so that means something's wrong. So you move it until both chains are equal and you can get this extended out most of the way. And basically you want the chains to be equal tension and that means you're in the right spot. So we'll go ahead and put this on the car like so. Really, you just need to take it off. You can rotate it whatever way you want. As long as the chain is equal like that, you're fine. So let's take it over to the car. So we'll use the piston to kind of guide this one where it needs to be. It won't go on any other way, obviously, because there's the inner and outer splines. So once you get that all lined up, it should lock in. There it goes. And then again, for this, I'm trying to keep all the holes centered for now until we get the alignment tool on. So just kind of line up center. At this point, you can put this uh, washer on. You can see how it's kind of got a slight waver to it. It's not much, but you can see the wear marks on this one that corresponds to these spots. And then you can see the circles. That's where your bolt or your nuts will go. So we can get that on now. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble all the rest of this stuff here. So with these, you drop three bolts in. They're the uh, inverse Torx. And then everything hand tight right now. We will tighten everything after we get the alignment tool. You'll see that in a minute. Spacer number one, the fat spacer, put that on. This one has an F for front. It's got also a spring loadedness to it. Put that on like that. And then the last one, got the same kind of arrow the other one did that was over here. We'll just line that arrow up at the block edge, just like the other. And it should still line up. So double check yourself, make sure you're good. At this point, there's six nuts that go on. We'll put all those in place. I don't even want to call these hand tight because if you hand tighten them, the pistons won't move either. So just basically get them on and touching so there's no wobble. So you should still be able to move the pistons in and out after everything's in. So your next step will be a pain in the butt if you don't. All right, so now let's install the Vanos tool. And the tool here is just a preset block. It's got set screws in it. Don't adjust these. They bottom out anyway, just make sure they bottom out. But there's two black pins here and that'll be what we will pull our Vanos pistons to match. So they will touch, I'll show you that in a minute. So we'll tighten these down. I'll put a few bolts in, make sure it's flush with the block. All right, let's take a look at this. I'll show you how this looks. So we've got piston here touching. If it isn't, you'll see a gap between there. You just make sure you pull them so that they're touching each of these. And then you know your Vanos pistons are set properly. At this point, we can torque everything down now that everything's in place. The bolts go to 20 Newton meters, the nuts go to 10. Start by just getting everything centered. I'm gonna use like a five Newton meter setting. So we'll start by that. All 
All right, make sure your tensioner pin's removed. We're gonna remove the camshaft holding tools and turn the engine over twice and make sure the engine is in time still. All right, we're top dead center on here. We'll take our cam tool, make sure we can put it back in. All right, everything's in time. So now we can go ahead with reassembling the rest of the engine. We'll take the Vanos tool off. We'll reinstall the Vanos unit, valve cover, oil pan, and then we'll just keep working. So I'll run that in a time lapse. All right, there's our fully timed and mostly uh, assembled engine. So we're gonna spend the rest of the day today putting all the accessories and everything, getting the uh, oil filter housing on, the intake manifold, and then I'll do a separate video on our exhaust. There's some things we have to do to make that work. So stick around for that. If you enjoyed this video or if it helped you out in any way, please give it a like. If you wanna see this E46 fire up pretty soon, consider subscribing to the channel. We're gonna have lots of fun with this stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching and peace out.